Hey, do you want to increase your online course revenue and finally hit those six or maybe even seven figures in this new year? Then definitely keep on watching this video because I'm going to be sharing nine most effective strategies to do just that. Hey, my name is Anastasia, I'm a launch strategist and online course expert and for the past four years I have been working as an online marketer in the online education industry. I have been part of multi-million dollar course launches and online course funnels and now help coaches, consultants and business owners scale their revenue by leveraging the power of online courses. Do you want to create your first digital product but don't know where to start? Then definitely subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be sharing more videos like this one that will help you scale your revenue and enter the digital product world. As you watch this video, let me know in the comments below, what is the revenue stage that you are at currently? Are you just starting out from zero? Are you aiming to hit five figure months? Or do you maybe want to crack those six or even seven figures this year? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's jump right in. My tip number one for scaling your online course revenue is to include upsells and downsells. This is one of the simplest yet most effective ways to drive your revenue up. But first things first, what are upsells and downsells? An upsell is typically a product or a service that is more advanced, more expensive, and more detailed than your main offer. Think a bump up to a course, an extra module on a course, a more advanced stage of your program, or an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with you on extra conditions. Conversely, a downsell is an offer that is typically less advanced, less detailed, and cheaper than your main offer. Think an ebook, a template vault, cheat sheet, or downloadables. Okay, so why do upsells and downsells work so well? It's because you already got your audience's attention. They're already considering buying something from you, so you might as well include options that best suit them. For users that are more advanced, you include an advanced offer and they spend more money with you than they initially planned. For people who are still on the fence and they're not sure they want your flagship offer, you include something of a lower price, which allows them to test your product and still test your product universe. It's a win-win situation. Do you think you'll implement this with your course? Comment with your course topic down below and I'll respond to every comment with a suggestion of an upsell or a downsell topic. My tip number two is to include buying triggers. What are buying triggers exactly? Well, they're a pattern of actions that are deeply rooted in our psyche. Disclaimer, this is not about manipulating your audience. Although you can use buying triggers, just like any other marketing tactic, to sell a crappy offer, this won't serve you long term. So please only do this on offers that you're 100,000% certain in. Okay, but what are these triggers exactly and how can you implement them to sell good offers that actually help people? Well, Jeff Walker first coined this term in his book, Launch, and he describes them in detail and there are loads of these triggers, but in this video, I'm going to mention the ones that are the most effective and the most important. Trigger number one is authority. Following people with authority is the way our brains have developed evolutionary to make decisions faster and more efficiently. But what that means for your marketing is that using authority will help people make decisions on whether to buy or not to buy your course faster. Think about it. Have you ever bought a book which you haven't heard of before, you didn't know the author, just because it had that circle that read Oprah's book club on it, or maybe it had New York Times bestseller on the cover? That's authority in action. You trusted the signs of quality because you know them. You didn't know anything about the book or the author, but you trusted the authority and made a buying decision. So when you're marketing your course, implement all of the authority triggers that you have. That could be prominent clients you've worked with. That could be the universities you went to. That could be all of the wins you've had in your business. But what about if you're just starting out, if you're just launching your first course, but if you're really starting from zero, then you can use the halo effect. So what that means is that you should take a look at your program. Which frameworks do you use? What kind of materials do you provide? Do you maybe use the same framework that is used in Harvard or to train top athletes? Then show that off because that's also a case of showing authority. Or do you maybe follow a method by a very prominent expert in the field? Show that off as well. 
When I mentioned Jeff Walker earlier on in this video, I used the authority trigger because he's a very well known and established author. So there you go, that was the authority trigger in action. Trigger number two is reciprocity. And the idea behind this trigger is that when someone provides you with something of value, you feel an innate desire to reciprocate that, so to give value back. This is the reason why sharing tips and tricks and actually communicating with your audience on channels like Instagram and YouTube works so well. By providing value to your clients, you not only showcasing your coaching and teaching style and your knowledge, you're also using the reciprocity trigger, which makes them more likely to buy your paid offers. Our next trigger is trust. Ultimately, every buying decision we make comes down to trust. Do we trust this expert or coach to lead us through the transformation that we want to have? The good news is it's now easier than ever to build this trust with your following and with your audience by leveraging the power of social media networks. You can showcase your values, show who you are as a person, and really invite people into your life and create that feeling of trust, that one-on-one -on -one connection. I've actually already mentioned this point in my previous video where I've discussed online course launches trends for 2022, so be sure to give it a watch because I go over it in more detail in that video. Next up is anticipation. Do you remember when you were a child and you were counting down the days until the summer vacation finally started or until Christmas or New Year's came? Well, this is what anticipation trigger is all about. Humans are way more excited about something when they can anticipate it, when there is a build up, a countdown, when they know something exciting is coming and they're looking forward to it. So what that means for you practically, that means instead of ambushing and surprising your audience with an offer out of the blue, you need to build up that anticipation. Show them everything that goes into the creation of the program, show them bits and pieces, show them teasers, really build up that nice anticipation in your audience. Community is another trigger that is super important if you wanna drive your online course sales up. Did you know that scientifically speaking, the fear of being left out of the group is even stronger than the fear of death, that's because evolutionary wise, people have developed that way. If you were cast out from the tribe, you would likely die on your own. This is also why when you see pictures of your friends partying without you all over social media, you feel uneasy and you feel that fear of missing out because your body systems are reacting as if you were in danger of death. Now, I don't recommend you go around and tell people that if they don't join your program, they'll die sad and alone. But what you can do is implement tactics that will showcase what value community has in your program. People love to belong to a movement, a club, or a team. So how can you implement that? Can you maybe create events inside of your community? Can you showcase how much networking is happening, how people are connecting with each other, and how much value they're providing to each other? And the last trigger we're discussing in this video is scarcity. Now, if you've ever tried to book a hotel room through booking.com, you know what I'm talking about. Those little red lines, only one room left at this price, and the countdown ticking down made you feel so anxious to book the room as soon as possible. Now, I don't recommend you implement the exact same tactic but the way the scarcity trigger works is that when there's less of something we want it more and we make our decisions faster because here's the thing if your audience postpones making the decision on whether or not to buy your course they will likely forget aka they just won't make that purchase so how can you implement scarcity in your program well if you do in live launches then scarcity is already ingrained in the way your program works there's a certain deadline by which people have to make the decision otherwise they won't be able to join the program until the next cohort starts or you could limit the number of seats that are available. This works especially well for VIP places where you get one-on-one -on -one coaching, for instance. Or you could set a timer for when the price goes up or when a certain discount expires. Get started with these triggers. Try to implement them in your course and I can guarantee your revenue will go up. And by the way, let me know in the comments below whether I should do a whole separate videos on these bias triggers alone because there are a lot more triggers that you could use for your online course sales. Hey, are you enjoying this video? Then you're going to absolutely love my bi-weekly newsletter because that is where I share all of the insider scoop on online course launches, the strategies that I actually try out with my clients and information that I just don't share anywhere else. Link is in the description below. 
Okay, let's jump right back in. My tip number three is to bundle your offers. So if you have more than one program, bundle them together and sell them at a discount. You will make less profit per program, but you will make more revenue overall because you will entice people to spend more money. Think about it. Did you ever want to go into a fast food chain restaurant to just get fries, but then the cashier told you that just for 50 cents more, you could upgrade to a menu and get a drink for free. Did you do that? Well, statistically speaking, 90% of people will take on the upgrade. So really look at your offers. Can you bundle them based on certain topics? Can you bundle them based on certain expertise that people will learn? And then do that and promote your bundles. My tip number four is to sell more and promote your offers more often. Now, I know a lot of experts and business owners struggle with this. Sales is a very touchy subject for a lot of people because a lot of people feel squeamish and sleazy when they're trying to sell. But listen, by selling your offer, you doing your audience a service. Let me explain myself. An average American sees around four to 10,000 ads in a single day. You've heard that right. That means people are drowning in this ocean of information. And that's just ads, not speaking about the daily responsibilities, the things they need to do, things on their mind. So you're not only competing with your direct competition, you're competing with all of the information out there that is swamping people on a daily basis. So here's the thing. If you only talk about your offer once, there is a very big chance your audience simply won't see it or simply won't pay attention to it. So by talking about your offer more often, by promoting it, you are actually doing your audience a favor because they might have just forgot they really want to join your program, but it just slipped their mind and they got overwhelmed with their daily responsibilities. By reminding them, you're allowing them to not miss their chance. So next time you feel sleazy about sales, just remember this and change your mindset because I can guarantee this will drive up your course sales. My tip number five is to create brand ambassadors, not just students. Now, I hope that by this point you have already gathered testimonials and that you're actively using them in your marketing. If you're not, get on it ASAP. But there is another thing that can even take up your testimonials up a notch and make them even more effective. And that is to turn your students into brand ambassadors. Think, how can you deliver an experience that will make your students want to talk about you to their friends, to their colleagues, and share information about you and your course? Is there a special event you can do? Can you over deliver on the value that you give them inside of their program? Can you help them out with a really tricky situation? There is a whole strategy to how you can create those peak moments that will make people remember you more and that will make people talk about you more. So let me know in the comments below if I should record a whole separate video just on this topic. My tip number six is to sell the transformation, not the process. All too often when I work with clients and we do their audit, the first thing I see is that their sales page is filled with all the cool tactics and strategies and processes they will use to get people to their point B, to their transformation. And here's the thing, people don't care. They just want the end result. If your value proposition is that you help coaches grow on Instagram 100,000 organic, activated, engaged, real followers in a year, I can guarantee they do not care how exactly you'll get them the result. They just want an instruction from you that they can complete step by step to get to that transformation. So stop focusing on the how you will get your students to achieve the result and focus on that transformation. Really showcase their way from the point A where they currently are to their point B where they actually want to be. My tip number seven is to build an audience. Now, this shouldn't come as a surprise to you. The bigger the audience, the higher the potential revenue. But here's the thing. I'm not talking just about any audiences. I'm talking about audience you own. Meaning, if you have 100,000 followers on Instagram and 200,000 followers on YouTube, but you have zero email addresses in your mailing list, that means your audience equals zero. What if all social media networks were to disappear tomorrow? What if your account was hacked or blocked? You cannot really control that. You don't really own the people who follow you. What you can do is get the email addresses of those people because then you have an emailing list which you own. And unless people opt out of the emails that you're sending them, 
You can always communicate your promotions, your new launches to them, and you can constantly keep up this flow of communication and you do not depend on an algorithm, you do not depend on an ad budget, and you do not depend on other platforms. My tip number nine is to constantly analyze your sales funnel. Now, what I mean by that is that if you're selling an online course, you have a sales funnel, meaning people who don't know about you first find out about you, then they're interested in your offer, then they're considering the purchase of your online program, and then they buy. Now, there are a lot of tactics to increase your online course revenue. Some tactics are geared towards driving more traffic at your sales page, some tactics are geared toward converting more people, some tactics are geared towards engaging more people with your content. But here's the thing, in order for these tactics to work, they need to make sense in your sales funnel, meaning, if 100 people a day go through your webinar funnel, watch your webinar, yet no one buys, driving more traffic to that webinar will likely won't help you much. It will be just wasted money. Because in this case, there's something wrong with the webinar. Why is this targeted audience not converting? Are you not handling objections right? Is there something wrong with the messaging? You need to solve this bottleneck lower down the funnel. Conversely, if 10 people a day watch your webinar and 10 out of 10 convert, then you do know that your problem is that you're not getting enough eyeballs on your webinar, not enough eyeballs on your content, and you need to drive traffic generating tactics. And this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments down below which of these tips will you implement first. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button. This will really help me bring the online course knowledge to more creators like you. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I release new videos, which will happen weekly. And if you want even more insider scoop on all things online launches and actual strategies that I try out with my clients, don't forget to subscribe to my bi-weekly newsletter. Link is in the description below. All right, I really enjoyed sharing the tips with you today. Until I see you next time.